Hindu Muslim mob violence flares tensions in the United Kingdom. It all started on August 28th when a cricket match between India and Pakistan in the Asian Cup and the United Arab Emirates sparked numerous violent interreligious protests in the city of Leicester in the United Kingdom. It's still unclear which side started the violence. Some claim that after India won the game, supporters poured onto the street and began chanting anti-Pakistan slogans. The religious community leaders have called for an end to the protests, but the animosity between the Hindu and Muslim groups has remained and even spread to other cities. Videos of the protests went viral in which masked men can be seen throwing bottles at the police, shouting anti-Hindu or anti-Muslim slogans, and tearing down a religious flag at a Hindu temple. A saffron Om flag, a symbol of the Hindu religion, was desecrated by an Islamic mob directly in front of the Leicester police. A Muslim community, led, a Muslim community leader, um, Ruksana Hussein, told The Guardian about a radical group that marched through East Leicester on September 17th, chanting Jai Shri Ram, a pro-Hindutva slogan. A former chairman, a chairperson of a national Hindu organization, um, Dirishti Mai said that the Hindus were the targets of harassment. A large number of law enforcers were dispatched to control the violence. Dozens of perpetrators have been arrested by the police, including a 20-year-old already sentenced to 10 months in prison. Reportedly, a large portion of those arrested were not even residents of Leicester, but outsiders that came to engage in group intimidation on behalf of their religious group. So, before we even get into this news, I want to make something clear. Personally, I don't know about Armin. I myself will be making no claims about who started this, who has engaged in the most violence, all etc. Because the amount of disinformation online is absolutely insane. I've done a lot of research into this topic and there is so much that is completely contradictory I cannot responsibly make a claim about a lot of the stuff that has happened there because there's so much information that on both sides, you know, about how things went, who said what, the authorities claim this, blah, blah, blah. It's almost impossible to make a clear determination of what actually happened. So what I personally find more interesting is almost taking a, a media analysis lens looking at this about how different sides have reported on this kind of issue but i know armin has been following a lot of the story because he follows um like our lovely ali dawa our lovely fundamentalist muhammad hijab who has actually been responsible for inciting a lot of tension and violence in the area literally showing up to mobilize a mob in the streets I don't know how this man still has a channel on YouTube. That itself is shameful. Okay, let's be honest. Um, but Armin, so what is your understanding of these events? Well, I mean, I, I, I don't think we should be trusting my understanding because my sources have been Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dabwa, which, which are not the best of sources, okay? So these are Islamic preachers. Well, okay, but what is their narrative? Let, let, let's just look at this as a battle of narratives then. Um, well, the narrative is that we're going to come, you know, I don't know if I could say it on YouTube. Um, they're just trying to be macho and tough and say that we're going to come fuck shit up. Like, and that's what they, this is, this has become more um, competition about who's more macho and strong and can, you know, commit the most, like people, like even the YouTube channel, uh, Smile to Jenna was saying that I could go to gym and get strong. <laughs> like, like, don't look, I'm skinny and all, but I could go and to the gym and get strong. And that's, <laughs> and I got come like, and they're at their tail, you know, Muhammad and German and other people were like coming at us. So like, you know, we have gangs, right? And like, they're like openly advocating for violence. Like they're telling the Hindu side, do you know the Pakistani side in, in the UK? We have a whole bunch of Pakistani gangs. And like, I thought you guys said that you're not in for form of violence. You know, you guys, you guys are not for violence. They just went full stuff. mask off. They went full mask off. 
They're like, oh, we're just here to be peaceful and practice our faith and all this stuff. And then they're like, we have gangs. We you have better gangs. watch yourself. <laughs> I saw a Muhammad hijab saying the most disgustingly bigoted stuff against Hindus. Like, I don't even know if I want to repeat it. So I first heard about this because I follow a lot of accounts on Instagram that are, you know, for the protection of Hindus across the world, blah, blah, blah. A lot. I've seen them post things that are actually blatantly false before. So I didn't trust what they were posting right away. That's how I first became aware of this. Of videos of people legit attacking Hindus, saying disgusting anti-Hindu things, and just running through Leicester, like straight up mob control over the streets. It was crazy. So I, I was like, okay, we gotta talk about this, but I wanted to wait for the situation to evolve a little bit for things to get a little bit more clear. Now, I don't think things actually have become that much more clear, personally. Um, but there has, I mean, it's just continued. This has been going on for weeks. Wait, I, here, look, let's look at this article. Okay. Oh, wait. Um, so this is our own Muhammad hijab. Oh, we got another super chat. By the way, we missed a, lot, a couple of super chats we didn't read earlier, but I'm going to start. No, this we did. One. Oh, we did. Okay. Yeah. Um, Islamist preacher accused of stirring up hatred. Hatred in how do you pronounce the city again? Leicester. Leicester. Muhammad Hijab was also one of the leading figures during recent demonstra demonstrations in London that were condemned as anti-Semitic. Okay, an Islamic preacher who was involved in anti-Jewish demonstrations in London has been accused of stirring up hatred hatred in Leicester, where attacks on Hindu temples and shops led to dozens of arrests. Muhammad Hijab was one of the leading figures during demonstrations in the capital that were condemned as anti-Semitic by Jewish groups. It can now be revealed that Muhammad, Mr. Hijab was last week also in Leicester, where anti-Hindu demonstrations turned violent and later spread to Smith Smithwick yeah. in the I, West. Who, who knows how to pronounce any of these UK names? It's crazy. These people are like they're like. Why is Lester spelled like that but pronounced like Lester? They want to act like they're more intelligent because they write things in a way that only they can pronounce. They're like, look at us, they're so <laughs> sophisticated. You know? That's that's their that's their intention. Have you seen the way that like the Thames River, the way it's spelled versus how you say it? Come on, guys, what are you doing? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Yeah. Clashes broke out in the city on Saturday, September 17th, when a group of young Hindu men marched through Green Lane Road, where there are several Muslims owned businesses shouting Jai Sri Ram, a religious chant which has been co opted by far right Hindu nationalist groups in India. Other videos shared. Okay, so, and I'm going to read this entire thing. I just wanted to see what did hijab do that is. I'm going to read this. I'm going to probably make a video about this on secular. I'm going to read this and do a video about it on secular jihadists. So go subscribe to secular jihadists. But I saw a video on Ali Davos channel, um, which was very embarrassing to Muhammad. I don't know why he uploaded that because the Muslims there were accusing Ali Dawa and Muhammad Hijab as trying to use this event to make themselves look like the leader and they were like get out of here this is like you have nothing to do here like this is because they went there instead of like interviewing people and being like okay why are you here what what are you doing they went there like they gave the camera to someone else and they were like they're acting they think, acting like they're the commanders right and they're like hey people go there like no stand back do this and people are like who are you so <laughs> what are you it was so they were like they wanted to be recorded as if they're the leaders and they're the alpha and everybody is taking their their command and people there were like move aside this is not you cannot like they were you're being shut down by, their, by the muslim side stop interfering yeah. you're causing problems for us you're making our lives worse yeah, it was so embarrassing. I don't know why they uploaded that because it was they actually accused them of uh, of this. Um, and you can see that they took a little bit of a 
uh, they stepped back and they started recording. Muhammad, there's a video. I, I'm going to show all of this. Is like a He goes to a reporter like, "Do you want to interview me?" And the lady was like, "No, move aside. I was just a recorder." <laughs> like it was so embarrassing. It was so. He bad. posted this himself. Ali Daba posted this. Oh, like Muhammad no. just walks to the reporter like, "Do you have any questions? Do you want to report this?" And like the lady was like, "Who are you? Move aside. We're just going to record in front." <laughs> It was so bad. It was so bad. I don't know. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go over all this on secular judges. So go check us out. It's so bad. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, <laughs> that's yeah, crazy. So good, Overall, yeah. this whole situation has got to be so freaking embarrassing to so like on so many different levels. On so many different levels. First of all, this incident ongoing incident is going to be used for years as fuel of anti-immigrant rhetoric this is a dream of people that oppose immigration to see this kind of thing this is like they're salivating at the mouth to see this kind of thing and i was thinking about it if i was a normal person living in leicester i would be so freaking pissed I would be so angry about all this BS. I'd be like, I live in this community. I'm just here to have a normal life. And you come and bring like your subcontinent style communalism into my town for the sake of what? A freaking cricket match? Are you an adult? What's wrong with you? And this isn't even if I was like a white English person or if I was a second or first, third gener generation immigrant myself. If I was an immigrant in Leicester from a South Asian community, I would be so freaking pissed at these people. I'd be like, what's wrong with you guys? Do you have any idea what damage you're doing to our community? The way that people will use this to fuel racism towards all of us? Have you no shame for the sake of your religion, for the sake of your religious group? You're fucking over all of us? Like, am I off base? No, no. Um, and actually, you know, I'm going to show a part, some, to be fair, there were some Muslims and Hindus who got together. A uh, friendly Muslim sent me a clip of video who were like, oh, this is this is represent us. Uh, we're together and the Muslims and Hindus can get along just fine, uh, blah, blah, blah. But it was just like, it was not very passionate. It was just a bunch of old dudes just reading off of a script. And I just wish there was like more. I made, um, I, I'm going to highlight that part in the secular journalist as well. And it, it, again, it has to be um, appreciated that somebody at least said that, right? Um, but it's just so weak and pathetic compared to all the, pa the the people who are coming out for hatred with more passion, with more charisma, with a lot more understanding of what works with the youth and what gets more clicks and what gets more views, right? Um, I actually suggested on Secular Jihadis with Harris Sultan that the best way is for a whole bunch of passionate, charismatic, charismatic, young YouTube and Muslims or Hindu people who are good with social media and YouTube like that to start a campaign. Again, this is, a, I'm giving, I'm giving you a tip as an atheist free of charge. Okay. You want to change the narrative? You want to change the narrative? This is Muslims and Hindus in, in the UK. This is how you do it. Okay. Again, consultation free of charge. Okay. You come out, Together, you 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 know you're a Hindu temple young or a Hindu young active group. You call up your the, your local mosque or, or a whole bunch of other Muslims that you know. All right, you're like let's get some food, let's get make some sandwiches and go you know feed people in the street and give food to homeless people at the same time. Right, we do a Muslim Hindu um, project together and we get cameras there and we invite reporters to come to show like look. That was one side, but it's not everything. Look at us. We, Hindus and Muslims, we are able to get together and do something like this, okay? To show that not all of us are just hating on each other. Okay, and the reporters should love this, right? Because reporters were like, reporters were like, oh yeah, good immigrants is like, a, is there, is 
you know, their bread and butter, right? Like, oh, we look, we're like highlighting some positive stuff from immigrants. Like, look, this is the this is the side that other people don't show you. Like, they love this. The reporters would love this. So tell them that, and you know, it's just it, it's beautiful. So everybody would like to cover it. I will cover it as well. Like, I, I, you know, I know, I know, I know that means not much to you guys, but I will cover it, right? Just do this project. It will. Everybody would like many people would appreciate it. Muslims from your side would appreciate it. Like, oh look, they're making us look good. These events make us look bad, but they look. Some people are actually doing something that makes us look good, right? Hindus, Muslims get together, make sandwiches. Okay, no pork, no beef, no pork, no beef sandwiches, right? So, and feed it to the homeless, and also hug each other, uh, get people to record each other. And Muslim, imagine like. A Muslim on one side and a Hindu on the other side. The other one is cutting bread, and the Muslim is like putting stuff in the bread. Like they're working side by side next to each other and feeding the homeless people. This is beautiful works. It's like a, you're doing something positive. You're helping. Um, you're you're changing the narrative. You're helping homeless people, and you're making the streets um, safer for Muslims and Hindus. And you're also changing because a lot of people are now having more anti-immigrant views about you guys because of all of this, right? You want to fix that? Yeah, I was I mean, reading a really interesting piece by a guy who's from an immigrant background saying we need tighter controls on who immigrates to the UK. And this is actually a really interesting piece because it talks about post Brexit. There's been a disproportionate amount of um, non-EU migrants that come to the UK, but a disproportionate amount of these immigrants are from South Asia, particularly India and Pakistan. From 2019 to 2021, the number of Pakistani citizens granted a skilled work visa rose by 62%, with the corresponding figure for Indian citizens being 14%. When it comes to sponsored study visas from 2019 to 2021, this has risen by an astonishing amount of for Pakistani and Indian nationals, 256% increase and 164% increase, respectively. A total of uh, almost 100,000 Indian nationals were granted sponsored study work visas by the UK in 2021 alone, uh, and a further almost 65,000 on skilled work visas. So, and then they're saying, of course, like many migrants who have studied work and indeed permanently resettled in the UK, the majority of recently arrived immigrants from the Indian subcontinent will look positively to contribute to the social, cu cultural, and economic spheres of British life. But in a country which is now having to get to grips with subcontinental style sectarianism and ultra religious identity politics, which has seen parts of a regional English city descend into Hindutva Islamist battleground, is it wise to have such high levels of immigration from India and Pakistan? This is not to indulge in sweeping generalizations, but rather to understand the potential risks attached to high levels of immigration from these particular countries. What do you think about that? I mean, to be fair, the the um, Indians and Pakistanis in the UK might agree with that. Uh, <laughs> some of them don't want any more of them. So I don't think that would be a, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the, the ones who are already there. Your lives will be your future. I know you're young right now and you're rebellious and you might not care, right? If you're in your 20s or you're in your teens or you might not care about these things. But when you're when you turn 30 and 40, you're going to pay a heavy price for living in a country where people don't have favorable views on you, right? And at that point, it might not seem like it, but at that point, at that point, you are going to care. And every time you see a news like this, other people like doing this, you're gonna cringe. You're gonna like, oh my god, I used to be young and do st stuff like that. How embarrassing! Think about all they're the embarrassing people us. who moved from Pakistan, from from India, and they're like, I moved to the UK to get away from this BS. There you go. That's a good point. Actually. I would be losing my mind. In fact, this is one thing I find since I've been in Europe, I find this really amusing about Europe. I have never met so many immigrants who dislike other immigrants this much. Yeah. Like, I don't see this in the United States. And so it's fascinating to see people. I'm like, you came from Pakistan, mm -hmm. but you're like, hell no. You actually, Muslims, Muslims in the United States. Okay, but it's just something I've noticed. No, I mean, a lot of Muslims in the United States are also anti more immigration because they think that they would be embarrassed or like they were like, you know, we have a thing going on here. Please don't ruin it. So there's that in the U.S. We have that as well. Yeah, um, we we got a super chat. 
What is this? Um, ramen. Oh, my lovely ramen. Uh, he gave us another five euro super chat. Thank you, ramen. He's saying, if a mere sports match is enough to trigger Hindu Muslim religious violence, what will happen in the UK if there is a war between India and Pakistan? Hey, that's a good point, actually. Yo, I don't even want to think about that. Yeah. Um, here, let's read this one. Yeah, that's a good point. We don't know. But that's a very good thing to think about. Yeah. Forever Stormy is... <laughs> who is an Indian woman herself, is saying they brought their hatred to a foreign land instead of leaving it behind. That's the shameful part. And I think, oh yeah, and she says, please download I have well before he- Here, I have. I, I was, I, it was so embarrassing that I was like, this video might get removed. So I downloaded it immediately. So <laughs> also, Satya is saying, why sandwiches we can make biryani? Okay, yes, that, that makes more sense. Okay. Isn't um, biryani Persian? Yeah. No, I know. Well, I mean, <laughs> continuing the fight free. you had with Horace on secular jihadists. <laughs> Wait, look. The supremacy of Persian food. Look, this is the, I'm so gonna, funny. This is this is the part where people are coming to Muhammad the job and telling him like, bro, what are you doing here? And he's trying to like. We don't need you to come here and doing all of this stuff, stuff that we don't need that, bro. Okay, sir, bro. This, no. See, like, we don't need you, like, like we're, we grew up here. You're from London. We don't need you to come here and do, tell us to say stop, stop, stop here. Like, he's trying to, he was trying to act like a leader, and they now made him, made him like, um, you know, at first he was, like, acting, like, really macho and leadership-like, but then they forced him to tone it down a little bit. Right? But, like, let me find the part, the reporter part, because I want to make sure I got that part. <laughs> I described that, that part, right? Yeah, her. Okay. Who raised you? <laughs> Yeah, hold on, hold on. These guys. Who raised you? <laughs> yeah, just like I just. Like, yeah, how many? How many? How many? How many? How many? Yeah, how many? Yeah, Jonathan, listen. Yeah, let's speak to a guardian first. Good. You want to speak to me? If you like, who are you? I'm a YouTuber. No, no, oh, okay. All right, no problem. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Why would they upload this? <laughs> Why did they upload this? She was like, he comes to her and he's like, do you want to speak to me? Like, first of all, that question by itself, like, are you, do you think you're so famous that she would just be like, oh my God, Muhammad Hijab is here. Yes, let's please interview her. She's like, who are you? <laughs> I'm a YouTuber. He says it with I such authority. No, first he pauses because like, what? Like, I, he doesn't say anything. And then he realizes how insignificant, like, oh, I'm a YouTuber. She's like, no. <laughs> well, and she's like, well, I'm right. One more time. This is so beautiful. <laughs> this is so beautiful. I want to watch this one more time. Oh, yeah, how many, 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 Let's speak to the guardian first. He's like, let's speak to the Guardian first, as if like they're gonna do it rounds with talking to different. <laughs> so... Do you want to speak to me? <laughs> Who are... No, wait, you don't say anything. Hold on. Listen. Yeah, let's speak to the Guardian first. Do you want to speak to me? Who are you? I love it when she says, "Who are you?" Uh, I'm a YouTuber. Oh, okay. All right, no problem. No problem. Yeah. Why? Why would you upload this? Why would you upload this? This is so bad. This is the most embarrassing thing I've ever seen. Like, I'm embarrassed for you. God damn it. But the whole video is like, like, I, like, it's not just that. This whole video is embarrassment after embarrassment after embarrassment. They come in strong, telling people to stop, don't go here. And people are like, why are you doing like you're not from here this is our town like stop ordering us around it was such a self-own it was such a self-own and people and they have all the recordings of the things that they're accused of and they just ali davo like posted this on his channel and i like i don't understand like do you hate like are you anyways it was bad but I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna review this video on other things and the things i'm friendly you Muslim can't has make said. this stuff up oh my <laughs> <Yeah>. god <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> who are you <laughs> I'm gonna go. Also, th I would like to say that I appreciate all the Indians in the chat saying, talking about how they reverse colonizing Britain. <laughs> <laughs> That's freaking hilarious. I love you guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
But again, let, let me let me say let me say this because you didn't let me. Again, I'm gonna remind everybody. I'm gonna review this video and some other points about this whole all of this is happening on Secular Jihadist YouTube channel. So search for Secular Jihadist because there's a new short video that is gonna come up, uh, come out about this. Okay, so yeah. I'm gonna highlight all this video. There's a lot of embarrassing, juicy, embarrassing parts of it. So if you want to see that, make sure you're on that channel. I right, think. Go ahead overall based on everything i've read the islamist side of this is way worse than the hindutva side of this like the worst that i've seen reported that the hindutva side did was walk down this one muslim area of leicester chanting jai shri ram versus the muslim side of this were mobbing people desecrating religious sites intimidating religious sites in that other city i can't pronounce throwing bottles at police, assaulting police, like, so it's not com like proportionate on both sides. I don't know. I think, I think what's difficult is for a country that is trying to be very progressive is how to be honest and frank about having these discussions. Because in the media that I've been reading from England, like they're not being very frank about the dynamics between these two groups, that these groups are religious minorities, that they're ethnic minorities, that they're immigrants. Like people want to, what's the word I'm looking for? Like treat this with kid gloves, like walk around the tough spots without really acknowledging what's happening. And we need to be able to have honest discussions about what's really going on. I don't know what the solution for this kind of thing would be. We need to make sure that people are better integrated into communities, that the police appropriately respond to signals that stuff like this might happen and they don't they're not afraid to get it hands on because they think they're going to be accused of racism or something because we know that's a huge problem in the UK that the police just don't want to do things because they think someone's going to call them racist so they leave their citizens to get assaulted and uh, yeah way worse things to happen to children i mean it's horrific like i don't know and i think you know, people talk about the importance of these community leaders, like coming out and condemning these things and showing people a new way. At the same time, part of me is like, why are we outsourcing this authority to community leaders who seem to be ineffectual? Why are we outside outsourcing that authority? They should be respecting the authority of the state, their society, their neighbors, you know, the having a beneficial life for everyone not oh i'm not gonna do it only because you know my friday a mom told me not to i don't know <laughs> i love how satya is always clowning us i never expected dishonesty from a liberal <laughs> yeah. you got me <laughs> Armin, you're muted. Okay, I don't understand this comment by Oxymoron. What is this? Good outcome of this will be now the UK and white world will lose its moral authority to lecture the brown world. I don't understand I what this is supposed to mean because I have no idea. the people who did this came from the brown world. I don't know. I think that might be an own goal. <laughs> I don't know um, what that means, but okay. Okay. Oxymoron. Saying, I'm surprised that I agree with Susie. Well, you know, I think you I say that every week. How are you still surprised? <laughs> I'm a smart cookie, okay? I might be a lib, but I try to be, you know, smart and consistent. I think the fact that we're liberals and he's agreeing with us is surprising to him every time. <laughs> it um, breaks my brain on a weekly basis. <laughs> <laughs> you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.